Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for April 6th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawk Watch. Today there were moderate northwesterly winds, so the count was conducted from the south lookout. The morning was overcast, but by the afternoon it became partly sunny, and overall the temperatures were pretty cool, though by the end of the day when the wind died down a little bit it was comfortable. There was a steady flight of turkey vultures with around 300 for the day. I was sheltering in my car from those cold winds and shot this photo through the open moon roof. Here we have a beautia with a black and white plumage and kind of a angular M shape to it. Somewhat pointed wings, thinner than we would expect on something like a red tail. Kind of bulky in the breast but skinnier in the belly. This is a rough legged hawk and we see a dark trailing edge to the wings indicating adult and it looks like it has a bibbed appearance. This looks to me to be an adult male, light morph rough legged hawk. Here we have a big bulky butio with a dark belly band and dark patagial bars. This is a red-tailed hawk. And we see the dark trailing edge to the wings and the red tail that indicate an adult red-tailed hawk. Here we have a side-on look at an ASIP and we see a large head on this bird. And we also see a capped appearance where the dark blue on top of the head stops. And we have a paler back of the neck or nape region. Those are good field marks for an adult Cooper's hawk. Here we have an exhibitor high overhead. This bird's fairly compact looking, and even with the wings held out very straight, the head barely sticks out at all past them. And we see a very squared off tip to the tail because all of the tail feathers are about the same length. This is a sharp shinned hawk. Now compare that to this Cooper's hawk that's high overhead. And the main thing that's going to stand out about the Cooper's hawk is just that the head looks bigger. So this Cooper's hawk is in a glide posture, so it's pushing its wrists forward a little bit. But still, if we draw a line between the most forward parts of the wings, the head still sticks out well in front of that. So it's obviously a large headed silhouette. Now one thing to be careful of, you might look at this and say that the tip of the tail looks square, so you might think sharp shinned hawk. But in a glide posture, the birds are going to have their tails completely folded. So really the tip of the tail that you're seeing is only one or two feathers that are overlapping. So you don't really get a sense of how rounded the tail would be if it fanned it out a little bit. So let me just flip back to the sharp shinned hawk one more time. And you can see that very small headed appearance. And then back to the Cooper's hawk just a larger headed appearance. And for the birds that are up really high overhead, that's pretty much the main thing you're looking at. Here we have a small field bird that has a lot of black to the face and the throat. This is a breeding plumage Lapland Longspur, one of a flock of six that did a nice circle around the South Lookout and actually landed in the grass for a few seconds before continuing on. Here's two more Lapland long spurs from the same flock showing the top side. You can see they have some patterning to the back, kind of a brown collar to them. And again, you see that black on the face. And we don't really see many birds that have that much black to the face. Uh, maybe when we have male house sparrows fly over, they show a black throat. But out of all the field birds that we see, the Lapland long spurs in breeding plumage are the ones with the black faces. And here's a look at one more breeding plumage Lapland Longspur. And this is a species that I really don't see that often. A lot of the places that I live throughout the year, like Pennsylvania and Delaware, if you get any Lapland Longspurs, they're usually mixed in with flocks of horned larks in the wintertime. So they're in winter plumage. So it's pretty cool to be up here in New York and see them in the breeding plumage as they're migrating through. Here we have an eagle and we look at where the white is. We see a lot of white throughout the wing pit area and the underside of the body. That indicates that this is an immature bald eagle. It was a good day for common loons. We saw a total of 23 of them migrating over the south lookout. Here we have a large gray bird with a long neck held out straight and a long pointy bill and long trailing legs. This is a sandhill crane. We just talked about Lapland long spurs. Here we have a horned lark, and this was part of a group of about 20. Here we have a hawk gliding overhead, and looking at the overall shape, this is a butio. Although if you mistook this for an exhibitor, you'd be excused because this butio does have a rather long tail. And we see that this bird does not have a dark belly band, and it does not have dark patagial bars, so not a red-tailed hawk. 
And if we look near the wingtips, we see some translucent crescents, which is a good field mark for red-shouldered hawk. And this is a juvenile with that brown streaking to the underside. And notice in the glide posture how much it tucks the wingtips back. The wingtips can look very pointed on a red-shouldered when it's in a glide posture. But when it soars, it has those very blunt wingtips. Here we have two raptors flying together. If we look at the bottom left of the bird, we see it's brown overall. We see a long tail and we see long kind of pointed wings that are held up into a slight dihedral. And we see a white rump patch. And if we look at the top right bird, we see that it's basically the same shape, but a very different plumage with a grayish head and a lot of white to the underside with black wing tips and a black trailing edge to the secondaries. These are Northern Harriers with the adult female to the bottom left and the adult male to the top right. This was the bird of the day. I spotted this perched in a tree over near the parking lot. And as soon as I grabbed my camera, it flew, but I was able to get some flight shots. We see a medium sized songbird that is grayish and black with a white rump and a black mask to the face. So this is a shrike. And looking at the overall proportions to the face, it looks like a relatively large bill and a thin mask, making this likely a northern shrike. Now, this time of year, you also have to consider loggerhead shrike, which would have a smaller bill and a thicker mask. But this looks to be a northern shrike. And we've been seeing plenty of turkey vultures, but today we had our first group of wild turkeys with this group of seven. Taking a look at the eBird list, today we had 42 species. There were two new species for the season, which were wild turkey and northern shrike, bringing us to a total of 109 species for the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 304 turkey vultures, one osprey, five bald eagles, three northern harriers, seven sharp-shinned hawks, one cooper's hawk, two red-shouldered hawks, 33 red-tailed hawks, and one rough-legged hawk, and two American kestrels for a total of 359 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 6,421 and the season total to 24,724. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking partly to mostly cloudy with a slight chance of a rain shower, a high in the mid 40s and very light winds. They're saying west southwest and then I think it may shift to a lake breeze. So not sure how much migration we'll get tomorrow. It seems like it'll be a somewhat pleasant day and with the sun popping out, there should be thermals to get some raptors moving. Um, it's a little bit of a toss up which lookout we'll be at. We'll probably start at the north lookout if there is a southerly component to the wind, but later on, if that lake breeze kicks in, we'll probably move to the south lookout. So I wouldn't expect it to be a huge raptor day, but we'll probably be seeing birds and it seems like it's, it'll be a pleasant day to be out with those light winds and a bit of sunshine. Tuesday doesn't look like a nice day to be out. Windy with occasional snow showers, a high below freezing, only 31 degrees Fahrenheit and winds west-northwest at 20 to 30 miles per hour and about one inch of snow expected. So not looking like much migration is going to be happening on Tuesday and the count will probably be shortened or canceled. For Wednesday, it's looking partly cloudy with a high of 37 and winds west-northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So that will be another day at the south lookout and I would only expect light to moderate migration. And looking beyond that, with the current forecast, Thursday looks like it will probably be the best day this week with southeasterly winds. And those southerly winds will continue into Friday that we'll have to keep an eye on how much rain there's going to be. So should be some better days coming up towards the end of the week. And today ended up being a decent day. There was a steady flight and it was slow at times, but we had a few highlights with the rough legged hawk in the morning and then picking up couple new species for the season with uh, northern shrike and those wild turkeys and then really nice looks at that flock of Lapland longspur. So even on the slow days at Derby Hill there's always something interesting to see. So I hope to see you out sometime soon. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.